Welcome to Excellent Grades Academy. This is Dr. Bison EM. Today we're doing scenario questions from the University of Zambia School of Medicine in Basic and Applied Human Physiology. And this was test one that was written. So let's go into this video and look at the solutions. So this is blood physiology and it is likely to be repeated. So make sure you watch this video until the end and you answer all the questions with us. So these are physiology scenario questions and solutions. Number one, this is our scenario. A 28-year-old woman comes with her husband to the emergency room. You are asked to see them because she has anemia. So she has anemia. You note that the hemoglobin level was 8.5 grams per deciliter and her hematocrity is 33%. So the remainder of her blood, full blood count was normal. Now our question is, define the term hematocrity and the significance of the value obtained is. So define the term hematocrity and the significance of the value obtained. So let us just answer it in the same, in the next blank slide here. So question is, what is hematocrity? So what is hematocrity? So hematocrity is simply the ratio of the volume of the red blood cells. So the ratio of the volume of the red blood cells to the total to the total volume of blood volume of blood so this is what hematocrity is and since we're dealing with a woman here hematocrity in women is a range so hematocrity in women hematocrity in women is 37 percent to 48 percent so this woman has got a low hematocrity because her hematocrity in the equation is given to be 33 percent so because her hematocrity is low it means she has anemia so she has anemia so we've just answered uh this question here a now a1 says state four factors that can lead to a variation in hematocrity so state four factors that can lead to a variation in hematocrity what that means is that what factors what factors can lead to an increase or a decrease in hematocrity. Okay, in hematocrity. So now, you know that an increase in hematocrity is what we call polycythemia. An increase in hematocrity is what we call polycythemia. So now they're asking us, what can cause polycythemia? What can cause polycythemia is an exposure to high altitudes. So number one, exposure to high altitudes. Number one. So what high altitudes will cause is that there is decreased concentration of oxygen at high altitudes. So you're going to de develop hypoxia. And that, that hypoxia is going to be sensed by the kidneys. And the kidneys are going to produce a hormone that is called erythropoietin. And this erythropoietin is going to cause an increased production of red blood cells. Hence, you're going to have polycythemia. Number two, it is dehydration. If you had de dehydrated... What that means is that your plasma volume is going to decrease. If your plasma volume decreases, it means that the ratio of the red blood cells to that of the total blood is going to increase. Hence, you're going to have polycythemia. So one factor is an increase to hematocrity. The other factor is actually a decrease in hematocrity. So a decrease in hematocrity is also a variation that we call anemia anemia so now the question is what causes anemia what causes anemia they have a lot of things so number one iron deficiency will cause anemia so iron deficiency 
will cause anemia. Also, increased hemolysis. Okay. Increased red blood cell hemolysis. Hemolysis, which can be caused by diseases such as malaria. So, caused by malaria. Malaria or drugs. ETC. The other thing that can cause anemia is pregnancy. So pregnancy will cause a variation in hematocriti and also kidney failure. You know kidneys are the ones that produce erythropoietin which is a hormone that will cause the production of red blood cells. So pregnancy, kidney failure and increased red blood cell hemolysis will cause a variation in hematocriti. So we've looked at five things here. Number one, under polycythemia, we said exposure to high altitudes. Number two, dehydration. Under anemia, we said nutritional deficiency. We, call, we talked about iron deficiency. Increased red blood cell hemolysis, which is increased red blood cell destruction by diseases such as uh, malaria and drugs. And in pregnancy, also hematocriti is going to decrease. Also in kidney failure, hematocriti is going to decrease. All right, now let's do this question here. You are told that the mother has sickle cell anemia. Describe the shape of the red blood cells. So we know that the structure of red blood cells, so structure of red blood cells, blood cells in sickle cell anemia, sickle cell anemia, is crescent shaped they are crescent shaped okay crescent shaped or we say they are sickle shaped they are shaped like half the moon so if in describing you said red blood cells in sickle cell anemia are shaped like uh like 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 a new moon like a new moon you know how a new moon looks like? A new moon looks like this. So they are shaped like this. This is how they are shaped. They are shaped like a new moon. And this is crescent shaped. So we say they are crescent shaped. And they are rigid. So they are rigid. Not flexible. Not flexible. So those are the answers to these questions here. So we've done question A. Part A. Let's go to part B. Part B says the husband wishes to donate blood to his wife, but is of blood group O plus and has a hemoglobin of 22.5 grams per deciliter. While the wife is Okay, pardon. While the wife is of blood group, blood group B plus, what is the, what is the normal range of hemoglobin in men? So normal range of hemoglobin in men. Let us answer it from here. Normal range of hemoglobin in men is actually fourteen grams per deciliter to eighteen grams per deciliter. So that's question uh, B one. Number two. What is the pathology? pathological conditions what is the pathological condition does the husband have so you see the husband actually has got a high hemoglobin his hemoglobin range is supposed to be from 14 to 18 but he has 22.5 meaning that he has polycythemia so the answer here is polycythemia number three says what are the two types of path of the pathology in two above what are the two types of pathology in two above so there are two types we've got what we call polycythemia vera and we have polycythemia rubra 
Okay, so the two conditions here, number three, we have polycythemia, polycythemia vera, and we've got polycythemia lubra. So others would just say primary polycythemia and secondary polycythemia. Okay, primary polycythemia and secondary polycythemia. Number four, the pathological condition in two above, which is polycythemia, is characterized by an, by an increase in erythropoiesis, which is just production of red blood cells. Write short notes on the factors or factors that influence the rate of erythropoiesis. So factors that influence the rate of erythropoiesis. Let's just answer them. Number one, you've got renal hypoxia. Okay, so renal hypoxia. In renal hypoxia, what happens is that the kidneys are going to sense that there is reduced oxygen concentration in your blood. So there's going to be an upregulation in the production of erythropoiesis. When what happens is that there is overproduction of erythropoietin. Now the erythropoietin that is produced is going to go to the bone marrow and is going to upregulate the production of red blood cells. When this erythropoietin goes to the red blood cells, it will increase the production of erythrocytes by a rate of 10. So the erythropoiesis rate will be 10 times the normal. It will be 10 times the, the normal. So number one factor is renal hypoxia. Number two factor are what we call prostaglandins. Okay. Prostaglandins. So your plus prostaglandins are also going to increase the production of your red blood cells. So prostaglandins are also going to increase the production of erythropoietin, which in turn is going to increase the production of red blood cells. Number three is epinephrine. So epinephrine, this is a hormone that is secreted in, in your excitable states. When you're too excited, you know, emotional states. When this erythropoietin is produced, it is going to increase the production of erythropoietin. When epinephrine is produced, rather, it is going to increase the production of erythro erythropoietin. Number four is no epinephrine. So no epinephrine is also a factor that is going to increase the production of erythro erythropoietin. Okay, so renal hypoxia secondary to exposure to high altitudes is going to increase the production of erythropoietin that is going to in turn have an increase in the production of erythropoiesis. So that's number four. Number five, based on your knowledge on the ABO and RIH blood systems, can the husband donate to the wife? So this husband is B+. Plus. Or the husband is O plus and the wife is B plus, meaning that the husband is blood group O and has got antigen, uh, has got, is the racist positive. We know that blood group O is a universal donor. And since they are both positive, they are racist positive, the husband can donate to the wife. So here, yes, the husband can donate, can donate to the wife because he is blood group O, which is a universal donor, universal donor. Because we know that blood group O doesn't have any any antigens so that it's a universal donor and both of them both of them are rh positive so the husband can donate to the wife let's look at part six based on your answer above explain why the husband can or cannot donate to the wife so we've already explained the husband can donate to the wife because the blood the husband is blood group O. And blood group O is a universal donor. It doesn't have any antigens. So it can't cause any agglutination when donated to the wife. 
and both of them are RH positive. So because they are RH positive, the wife doesn't have antibodies against the antigens that are present on the blood cells of the husband. Let us look at part C. So part C says, you run further tests on the woman and find that her activated thromboplostin time is 35 seconds and prothrombin time is 14 seconds. What are the three pathways of blood coagulation? What are the three pathways of blood coagulation? So the three pathways of blood coagula coagulation are, so let's see one. We've got the intrinsic pathway intrinsic pathway number two we've got the extrinsic pathway and number three we've got the common pathway so these are the three pathways these are the three pathways of blood coagulation number two is saying what is the significance of the atpp the aptt and the pt and where have values within normal so now the significance the significance of the aptt and the pt is that they measure how long it takes your blood to clot okay so cb here aptt and pt measures how long it takes for the blood to clot or to form a clot the normal values for the pt is 10 to 13 seconds the normal values for the aptt is 30 to 40 seconds so now they're asking us where her values okay so her pt was 14 seconds and her att her APTT was 35 seconds. Okay, so APTT was 35 seconds. So APTT was okay. And her PT was 14 seconds. So they were okay. So they are, they are normal. They are within normal ranges. So they are within normal ranges. All right, so laboratory results show that the fetus is carrying RH negative. RH negative is the fetus at risk of developing hemolytic disease of the newborn. Is the fetus is the fetus at increased risk of developing the hemolytic disease of the newborn? Okay, so this depends. Is this her first fetus? Okay, so is this her first uh, fetus? If this is not her first fetus, yes. So the fetus is at risk it has, is at risk why because the rh negative if this is not her first fetus the mother the mother would have formed antibodies against the rh negative blood for the fetus okay so the fetus if this is her if this is her her first fetus, then it is not. But is the fetus at increased risk of developing the hemolytic disease of the newborn? Yes, the fetus is at risk. All right. So now, these were the questions that were in your test one under blood. Okay. So the next video is going to contain questions that are going to contain solutions to uh, cell physiology and body fluid compartments all right watch out for our next video and let's learn